Good afternoon, TGIF. Happy, happy Friday. I'm so excited to see you all again today. And we're talking about how to work through a no or how to get past the no. <coughs> how to move on in the conversation and not get bogged down. And guys, I got to tell you, the first way to get past the no <coughs> is to expect a yes. All right. Expect them to say yes. If you go in expecting them to say yes, your uh, presentation, your posture, your, um, I was going to say presentation again, but I already said that. But anyway, everything that you're going to say, everything that you're going to do is leading to a yes. You're expecting a yes. They've, they've already told you all of their pain. Now we're just solving their pain. I mean, if I said I had a headache, and somebody offered me an Advil, I wouldn't say no, because I know that's gonna solve my pain. Um, maybe you're on to the holistic approach. I don't know. But expect a yes. If you go into something expecting a no, you're gonna get a no nine times out of 10. If you go into it expecting a yes, if you go into it Knowing that you got the yes, believing in your head and in your heart that it's going to be a yes and that you are presenting the best offer that you can, you're going to get a yes. And I almost gave away step number two. Okay, step number two is to prepare for a yes. In real estate, in regular real estate, we have something called the highest and best. And the highest and best is usually in a bidding situation the agent the listing agent will come back if there's multiple bids on the property and the listed agent will come back and say okay we got three bids in we got three offers in we want everybody to go back and give us your highest and best well instead of going through all that crap i want you to be prepared the first time that you go talk to these sellers to give your highest and your best and it may be that you're working on a MAKO offer, maximum allowable cash offer, and it may be a low ball offer, it may be a wholesale offer. But go ahead and give the highest low ball offer you can give. Give the best low ball offer you can give. And then be prepared to also give them a five year lease option offer, a 10 year lease option offer. If you're an agent, you can give them all three of those and then give them a listing offer. Prepare for the yes. Be ready for the yes. Expect a yes. All right? And by preparing for the yes, you've, you've done your homework. You've looked at the comps. You've looked at what the house is worth. You've done some basic general research on... Uh, here to go and on what the repairs would cost. You're prepared. You know what's going on here. You know what's going to be expected of you. And I mean, none of us have a crystal ball. We're not running around with little magic eight balls. We don't know what God's going to give us in this situation, but we can always be prepared with our highest and best offer. That way, when we present, and we're expecting them to say yes, we also know that we have prepared ourselves to get a yes. We haven't gone into something half-hearted or half-assed. We've gone into it fully prepared, expecting a yes because we've done everything in our power to prepare for a yes. And maybe that means bringing a contractor with you. Maybe that means bringing a private money partner with you. Maybe that means uh, driving around and checking out the neighborhood and sometimes being prepared. This is going to be really crazy. But sometimes being prepared also be, means being willing to tell them that you are not the best fit for their solution. Believe it or not. When you expect a yes and you prepare for yes, it puts you in the position to say no. Let me say that again. When you expect a yes and you've prepared for a yes, it puts you in the position to tell them no. And there's power in a no. 
If you are expecting them to say yes, you know you can do everything possible, but then you get there and something uh, happens that you weren't prepared for. Maybe you hadn't expected the foundation in the back of the house to be missing. You should at that moment be able to say, you know what? That's more than I was prepared for. I can't take this deal. <clears throat> I would rather you you skipped a deal on purpose than doing a bad deal that'll drag down. Right? I want everybody to do as many deals as possible, but I only want you to do deals that you're comfortable with, that you are prepared to take under, and that you can expect to make great profits from. And many great profits are you know, less than what you originally wanted, that's fine, but I don't want you to take a deal just to do a deal. Okay, if you expect a yes and you prepare for a yes and then you get to the house and it's worse than you'd prepared for, you have every right and ability to say no. I turn down houses, believe it or not. I'll buy just about anything with a deed and dirt. But occasionally, I can't make it happen. And there's power in the no. Okay? But I like for you to have the power to say no <laughs> instead of getting it from them. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I apologize. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do to work through a no is to expect a yes. The second thing we're going to do to work through a no is to prepare for a yes. The third and final way that we're going to work through this no is we're going to ask for the yes. We're going to ask for the yes. As we are talking to them through the beginning when we're filling out our cell lead sheet, um, when we're setting up the appointment with them, we're trying to get as many soft yeses as we can. We're trying to get as many agreements in place as we can. That way when we come down to the final negotiating table, which is probably the kitchen table or the kitchen counter, or maybe it stinks and so you're doing the contract on the hood of your car, I always do it on the hood of your car, not on the hood of their car. <coughs> I'm all choked up. Okay. When we get down to that final negotiation, it's so much easier to ask for a yes then if we've been getting yeses all along. All right? And let me, let me give you an example of this. So one thing, when you're filling out your seller lead sheet, you, you, know, you say, uh, hey, this is Whitney. And they're like, great, I'm calling you about 123 Main Street. Okay, are you the owner? Yes. Do you want to sell it? Yes. Do you want to sell it quickly? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, great. Now tell me about the property. All right. We just got three yeses in a row. Now, when we're asking the rest of the questions, you know, it's going to be some nuts and bolts. There's some science to the rest of the questions. No big deal. But then when we get to the property, or when, after we've looked at property, we want some more yeses, all right? So if you're gonna ask a question, and practice this with your husband, or practice this with your wife, this, asking for the yes, works on so many different levels, y'all. <laughs> like, if you're wanting a date night, start asking lots of yes questions, and then they're just in the practice of saying yes, and it helps them spit it out, and you get what you want. Anyway, um, so if you're going to ask a question, think about how you're asking it. And are you leading somebody to a no or to something they may not understand? Or are you saying something that they would fully understand, that they would agree with you, and see why it's a good, it, it, why it's a good fit for them? Okay, so one thing. If I'm with somebody, we're walking through their house, and I'm looking at their house, and um, you know, on my lead sheet, they've already told me that they pay $700 a month on the mortgage. So one thing I would ask is, I'd be like, so you said you pay 700 bucks a month, right? And they would say, yes. I'm just clarifying. I'm just double checking. Maybe, you know, I'm looking at a bunch of different houses, and maybe I just want to make sure I've got this one in my head, right? 
And then I'd say, and that does include taxes and insurance, right? Yes. And this thing's been empty for a long time, hasn't it? Yes. And so it'd probably be a big help for you if somebody just took over these payments and it wasn't empty anymore and they took all the problems from you. Yes. Oh my gosh, that would be awesome. Where's the negotiation here? I got three yeses in a row. I asked a question that I wanted answered in a yes format, which fixes their pain points. Awesome. I expected the yes. I was prepared for the yes, and I asked for a yes. And as many times as you can do that, you're going to be, have you ever played dominoes? I don't know. We're all probably the same age. You played dominoes and they were loud when they crashed and your mom yelled at you and it was a disaster and they went everywhere. Okay, but it's like that with yes questions. Until you get a break somewhere in the line and it screws the whole thing up, right? Then you got to get back on the yes train and start chugging away again. Okay, all the way, all the way through the seller lead sheet all the way through the appointment, all the way through your contract. We're asking yes questions, we're getting yes responses, we're nodding yes, we're doing everything we can to keep this yes train full speed ahead. And the way you ask for the yes is by expecting the yes and preparing for the yes. And I promise this is going to work in so many different situations. Any kind of negotiation. And even if you tell me you're not good at negotiating, we negotiate all day long whether we want to admit it or not. If you're trying to set up an appointment with somebody, there's probably going to be some back and forth, some negotiation. My husband calls it compromising. I call it negotiating. Okay? Not a very compromiser, but I can negotiate the fire out of just about anything. All right? I negotiate. I don't compromise. <laughs> I'm going to tell him that, too. I just thought of that. That's great. <laughs> so anyway, all right. So we're going to expect the yes. We're going to prepare for the yes. And then we're going to ask for the yes. And guys, the hardest part of getting yeses is figuring it out in, in here. Getting it in between your own ears. Once you start that yes train in here, once you start getting some no's, you're like, oh, well, they're crazy. Let's move on. And a no doesn't hurt anymore. When you expect a no and you get a no, it's your own fault. Or because they're crazy. And there's crazy people out there, all right? Don't get me wrong. But when you expect a yes, you've prepared for a yes, and maybe sometimes in the preparation for the yes, you find out that this is not going to be a deal, and then you just say, no, not for me. But once everything checks out that you're expecting the yes, you've prepared for the yes, and you're going to ask for the yes, once those dominoes start going, you can't stop them. All right? And that is going to help so much. It's going to transform your whole brain. You... I've been at uh, Staples about all morning uh, because my little computer is trying to crap out on me. And the whole time I was there, we were negotiating back and forth, back and forth. I was there for like two hours. I'm sure they were super glad when I left. But I like to ask yes questions. I don't like to hear no. I don't like that word. It, it just doesn't suit me very well. Okay? So... I ask yes questions. Can you help me? Are you busy? I'm going to be difficult. Are you ready for this? Okay? I'm going to seriously ask the guy when I walked in those three questions. I got yes, yes, yes. I knew I was going to get a lot of yeses for the next hour or two. And I did. I was completely happy when I left. So start, before you get in front of the sellers, start asking yes questions. Start expecting yes answers. Start preparing for yes answers because there's nothing worse than being prepared for no, 
getting a yes and then being all thumbs and fumbling it. All right? Expect a yes, prepare for a yes, and ask for the yes. It's going to change all your negotiations. From the Chick-fil-A drive through to Staples, to season passes to something, to negotiating with sellers. Look for the yes. Be a positive person. Don't be a negative Nancy or a negative nicey. All right? Expect a yes. Prepare for the yes. Know what you're going to do when you get it. And then ask for it. Because after you've expected it and you prepared for it, you deserve a yes. I hope you've enjoyed my video today. This is my top three ways to work through a no. And I think it's really going to help you. I think you're going to enjoy it. Y'all start practicing that. Send me a message. Let me know how it's going. If you like the video, go ahead and share it. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Uh, share it with your boss <laughs> if you're still in the 9 to 5 situation so that when you ask for a raise, you've already practiced saying yes. He already knows that you want a yes out of him or her. But go ahead, share this thing around. If you have any questions for me, you can send me a message or you can go to Whitney Nicely, Whitney like Houston, Nicely like Nicely Done, WhitneyNicely.com and I'm book a call to talk to me. I'd love to talk to you. I had a lady that signed up yesterday and she's expecting the yeses. I was expecting the yes when I got on the call with her. She's going to be expecting yeses when she gets out to talk to sellers. So please, let me know if you have anything else that you'd like for me to cover. Let me know if I missed anything and let me know how this is going for you. Okay guys, I'm doing these videos so that you can learn, so that you can get better, so that you can go buy bigger, better, badder, more houses. That's the goal here, guys. So get out there and do it. Let me know if you need anything from me. Um, I'm going to do a couple lives this weekend. I don't know what time, but next week, all videos are going to be at 3 Eastern time, I believe. So let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if anything else you want me to cover. And let me know how this is working for you. Please, please, please. Send me a message and let me know how this is working. All right, that's all I have. Y'all have a good day.